right, all right, all right, all right. I have to tell you something. Well, first of all, let me take these off because I can't see anything with that. So, as you know, I've been working on the paper full effects and I was working on this update and I realized that I learned something new that is going to be extremely useful and helpful for anybody that wants to ever create their own effects and macros, basically. So what's the thing that I learned? Let me make these a little bit smaller so we don't, so you can see everything. Now for the past five years, I've been building stuff for DaVinci Resolve and I've always added the media in and also the media out to my macros. So it turns out that you don't need to add these to your macros. All you need to do in your macros is to make sure that whatever your media in would be connected to has an input selected and then whatever the would be the last thing connected to the media out has an output selected when you create your macro. So how does that work? In this case, this is the paperful effects uh, one, and this is also the demo. So if you want to download these, just check out the link in the description and you can download these for free. So you can try the tool and see how it works and if you like it and stuff like that. In this case, I used to have a media in right here that was connected to this one. Now, when you add the effect to anything right here in the edit page, you will see it like this. But there was an issue right here because in Fusion, if you open the effect, by default, you always have these other media in and media out that are already there. So if you have another media in right here, they both tend to fight each other and that's when issues happen, right? When things try to get at the same position. In this case, we have the media position right here and that is what the input is coming to. And then we also need to take into account the last node, which in this case is the auto merge that has the output right here. Now, for this tool, which is a little bit complex, it has the tracker data as well on the output and that causes all their issues, but don't worry about that because when you're building your stuff, you're probably not going to run into those issues. So how does it work? Let me show you this example right here. I just built the previous time that I recorded these and then I realized the video was not actually recorded. I built these. So this is just a random set of nodes that I wanted to use as an example. So we have the media in that connects to this transform and then we have the glow that connects to the media out. If you were to create your macro selecting everything, you have the media out as the output and then you will have the media in also as an output right here. So you are not going to be able to drag and drop these directly in Fusion uh, because it doesn't have an input value. So the way to save things or to save your macros as an effect is to not add those when you're creating them. So you would just select all of these. In this case, we're going to right click, create macro. And here by default, you already have the glow, which is the last node uh, right here that connects to the media out. And then you also have the transform one as the input. So if you were to save these, I've already saved these and drag and drop these into the fusion page right here. Let me find the effect test. There it goes. Test. Then you have that same thing that if I were to connect this media into that one, we have that working. Now this is not set up as a group. So if you were to do, if you were to add, set these up as a group, then it's a lot easier to then later on edit stuff inside it and stuff like that. But that's for another video. Okay. And then the same thing happens in the edit page. You don't run into the issue of the media end fighting for the placement and also you don't run into the issue of the media out fighting for it that usually shows up a text right here of like something about the media out not being there or something like that so when you drop these uh effect let me find this in the edit page again then you don't have any issues and that's what i ended up doing here for all the paperful effects that I've added to the tool in this latest update. I got rid of all the media ins and also got rid of all the media outs because you don't need to use those when you're creating effects and macros. Now, if you have multiple media ins, like in the split screens toolkit that I had, I think then there you would want to use those. So don't get rid of those if you're planning to create something that takes into account multiple media ins. But that's for another video because that's a little bit more complex, most likely. Now, what if you already have your tool and you're always running into that issue? What can you do? Well, well first of all, you want to open your tool as a group 
And if you've already built stuff, you probably know a little bit about how to move things around VS Code, right? Because if you were to use the macro editor, your uh, macro here that's organized will become deorganized the next time you save it. So what I do now is I only right click here and then save this as a setting when I move things. And then if I may need to make any other adjustments, I go into VS Code, which is what I use, and then I edit the code directly in there. So how, what do you do? Well, first of all, what you need to do is get rid of the media in, open it as a group, get rid of the media in that you used to have right here that was connected to these, like that. Just get rid of that. And by default, it probably will be connected or will have create this connection. If it doesn't create this connection, you have to save these as a group. And then you will have to go into your macro. Since we're already here, why don't I just show you? So your macro, if you used to have a media in, you will not have this main input control right here. So what you need to do is copy the main input control and then the source OP would be that node that you were used to connect your media into. And then the source will be name input. Now, if you have a long list of, of inputs right here, because you've already saved the tools with the different uh, other options that you can add to it, then all you need to do is copy these main input one dot instant input uh, ear or whatever that's called, or you can just copy these, stop your screen and then retype these. Because by default, when you have that media in, this will not be present in your macro. So I had to add these little line of code into all of the effects that I built after I got rid of that media in node. So that is what I wanted to show you. I could have done this video a lot shorter and not dive deeper into all the things that I dove into, but I think uh, by now you probably know pretty well what you should be doing and what you should not be doing when you're creating effects that you want to reuse and make sure that you avoid issues that the media in and media out can cause by being present in your macro. So that is it. For, well, before you leave, make sure to check out the Swabby bundle at bundle dot swabby dot com if you haven't done so yet and that is it for this video i'll see you in the next one here in swabby bye